So my daughters and I have been traveling a lot this summer and meeting new people and being in new places with new situations. And my um, one of my daughters said to me just the other day, Mom, it's so hard meeting new people. Like, I don't know what to say. And it's so awkward. And you make it look so easy. <laughs> and so I said, yeah, it is hard. I agree. And I wasn't sure if she was just venting or if she actually wanted to, um, you know, workshop this, problem solve this. And so I asked her and I said, do you, do you want to, um, you know, talk through this and, and brainstorm how it might be easier? And she said, yeah, I do. I just always feel stuck when I'm with somebody. And so I asked her some questions like, what, what feels hard about it? And, and where do you get stuck? And she said, I don't know. I just, I don't know how to start the conversation. And then once it's going, I don't know how to keep it going. And so I thought some of the, the things that we discussed might be valuable for some of you who also struggle with this. I know I struggle with it. As a matter of fact, I just read the book Quiet um, while I was on vacation in it was fantastic. You may not believe this. Some people don't that I am an introvert. I need to recharge my, I love people, but I need to recharge my batteries in silence. And um, so it takes a lot of energy for me to engage and make small talk. And um, that's one of the things that talked about with, with in quiet is that introverts don't really like small talk. And so I, I try to dig in, you know, and see if the conversation can go deeper. So anyway, a couple of quick tips that Jade and I came up with. Um, one is to have a few questions in your back pocket before you even get there. Uh, so, um, you know, thinking about, OK, what month is it? What's coming up in the world? Things maybe beyond the weather. Um, so the start of school is coming. Are you feeling ready for school? Did you take any fun vacations? And to have some sort of generic questions teed up ready to go before you even get to the event or the, the meeting or the networking. And then once you're in conversation, two more things I wanted to share. One is um, to, to use their words. Um, if, if they say, oh yeah, we're gonna, we have one more um, trip that we're planning. We're going to go camping before school starts. Think about the what they're sharing and use their word in your question. So, oh, in this case, it could be camping. It could be school starting. You're going camping. How wonderful. Where are you going? Um, and and they say, well, we're, we're in the past, we used to tent camp, but we haven't done it well. So we're actually renting a cabin. Oh, great. What what? does the cabin um, provide that, you know, you're excited about? And, um, you know, asking follow-up questions or what, what year in school are you? Or what are you excited about for the school year? So using what they say to form and inform your next question. But then the other thing I wanted to give a tip is I want you to think about the conversation like you, you have, you're playing a game of, of catch, you're playing a game of ball. And to, you know, throw the ball over there, get curious, ask some questions, but not make it an interrogation or an interview where you just keep the energy over there so much that they start to feel uncomfortable. So let them throw the ball back over to you. Or if they don't throw it to you, you can feel free to, to jump in and say, yeah, I used to go camping a lot when I was younger and oh, we've gotten a little lazy because it's a lot of work. And so we go up to Moon Beach every year where we do a little bit of glamping. And to think about if the conversation was a ball, is it lobbing back and forth? Pretty, it doesn't need to be equal, but you know, is the conversation flowing on both sides? What made me think of that is that wasn't my daughter's um, big struggle, but I was at an event recently with a whole bunch of people and um, I was amazed at how often the conversation was really one-sided, that the person kept talking and talking and talking and talking and never threw the ball back. And that just doesn't feel as fulfilling. 
And so that may be a metaphor or visual for some people that you think, okay, it's been over there for a while. I got to stop and asking questions and stop interrogating and insert something. Take, take the ball back because the game is a lot more fun. I know we had one of our foster dogs that would, you know, you'd play catch, they'd take the ball and run away with it. Well, okay, that's not very fun. <laughs> so bring the ball back, bring the conversation back. I hope that's helpful and that all of your conversations feel, you know, just a little bit easier if you try implementing these tips. And if you have other tips, I'd love to hear. Uh, this is all about training and practicing to be thoughtfully fit, which is about being able to communicate more effectively, have stronger relationships. So by all means, please let us know if you have other ideas. Thanks so much, everybody. Have a great week.